Hello, this is Sister Charlie and Winston, and I'm coming to you today with Friday's Daily Bible Study. I want to thank each of you for joining with me as we gather together to study the Word of the Lord, becoming more proficient doers of His Word and not hearers only. Our lesson for today is lifted up like the serpent, coming from John 3, verses 9 through 15. Amen. But before we get started, I want to ask each of you, if something is said, touches your heart, soul, or spirit, or if you have any questions or comments, please jot them at the screen below, and I will get to them as soon as possible. Amen. And I also want to ask you that if you would, join with us as we gather together to study, to uh, do, and to learn from the word of the Lord by subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell to be notified each time I put out a new lesson. Amen. So we're going to get ready to get started, but we're going to have prayer first, of course, and then we're going to dive right into the lesson. Your God in heaven, we thank you. We thank you because you are wonderful. We thank you because you are our counselor. We thank you because you are God Almighty. We thank you that you are our everlasting Father and our Prince of Peace. Lord, we thank you for making a way out of no way, leading us, guiding us in your true path of righteousness. We thank you for all the many blessings that you bestow upon us, those seen and unseen. We thank you for watching over us, strengthening us, and showing us the way to go. In Jesus' name, Lord, we ask that our eyes be opened, that we may see, our ears will be opened, that we may hear, and give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding from on high, that we may be more proficient doers of your word and not hearers only, that we may meditate on your word day and night and go forth in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. We're going to get ready and get started uh, with our lesson, Lift It Up Like the Serpent, coming from John 3, verses 9 through 15. And the scripture lesson text reads, Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Aren't thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witnesses. If I have told you earthly things, and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Amen, amen. This is a, a wonderful, a wonderful scripture. Of course, this is a powerful lesson for us to study on today. Knowing uh, Jesus Christ himself telling us, reminding us, letting us know, I am the one that was lifted up. I'm the one that was lifted up that you may have the right to eternal life. Knowing this, we must look to Jesus to live. Amen. Commentary says, again, Nicodemus illustrated the inability of the natural mind to enter into divine things. Doubtless, he was still trying to think of the new birth as a natural or physical event rather than as a spiritual one. And so he asked the Lord Jesus, how can these things be? And Jesus answered that as the teacher of Israel, Nicodemus should have understood these things. The Old Testament scriptures clearly taught that when the Messiah came back to the earth to set up his kingdom, he would first judge his enemies and destroy all things that offended. All those who had confessed and forsaken their sins would enter the kingdom. The Lord Jesus then underlined the infallibility of his teaching and yet man's unbelief concerning it. From all eternity, he had known the truthfulness of this and had only told what he knew and had seen. But Nicodemus and most of the Jews of, of his day refused to believe his testimony. As we know, many, many millions of people still refuse 
to accept the testimony of Jesus Christ. He said, what were the earthly things to which the Lord referred in this verse? It was his earthly kingdom. As a student of the Old Testament, Nicodemus knew that one day the Messiah would come and set up a literal kingdom here on earth with Jerusalem as his capital. What Nicodemus failed to understand was that in order to enter this kingdom, there must be a new birth. What then were the heavenly things to which the Lord referred? They are the truth which are explained in the following verses. The wonderful way by which a person receives his new, this new birth. Only one person was qualified to speak about heavenly things since he was the only one who was in heaven. The Lord Jesus was not merely a human teacher sent from God, but he was one who lived with God, the Father, from all eternity and came down into the world. When he, when he said that no one has ascended to heaven, he did not mean that Old Testament saints such as Enoch and Elijah had not gone to heaven, but that they had been taken up whereas he ascended to heaven by his own power. Another explanation is that no human being had access to the presence of God continually in the way which he had. He could ascend to God's dwelling place in a unique way because he had descended out of heaven to this earth. And as we also recall, uh, as he was transfigurated on the mountain, uh, uh, this was another one of the times that he were uh, in both places, as to say, at the same time. Um, and say, even as the Lord Jesus stood on earth, speaking with Nicodemus, he said that he was in heaven. How could this be? Here's a statement of the fact that as God, the Lord was in all places at once at one and the same time. This is what we mean when we say that he is omnipresent. While some uh, modern translation omit the words who is in heaven, they are widely supported in the manuscript and belong to the text. The Lord Jesus was now about to unfold heavenly truth to Nicodemus. How can the new birth take place? The penalty of man's sin must be met. People cannot go to heaven in their sins. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent of brass on a, on a pole in the wilderness when all the children of Israel had been bitten by snakes, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Read Numbers 21 verses 4 through 9. As they wandered through the wilderness to be to the promised land, the children of Israel became discouraged and impatient. They complained against the Lord. To punish them, the Lord sent fiery serpents among them, and many people died. When the, when the survivors cried to the Lord in repentance, the Lord told Moses to make a serpent of brass and put it on a pole. The bidden Israelites who looked to the serpent was miraculously healed. Let us make sure that we look to the Savior. Amen. Because there, if you do not look, uh, because it may seem uh, 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 very uh, ugly to look at and, and not pretty, so a pretty scene as in the passion, then we don't want to watch it. I don't want to see it. But this reminds us and brings us closer to the Lord. Amen. Helps us to remember who he was and what he did for our sins. Amen. And it brings us closer and more and makes us do more of what he would have us to do. Amen. Jesus quoted this Old Testament incident to illustrate how the new birth takes place. Men and women have been bitten by the viper of sin and are condemned to eternal death. The serpent of brass was a type a picture of the Lord Jesus. Brass in the Bible speaks of judgment. The Lord Jesus was sinless and should never have been punished, but he took our place and bore the judgment which we deserve. The pole speaks of the cross of Calvary on which the Lord Jesus was lifted up. We are saved by looking to him in faith. It said the Savior was made sin for us. He who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 
whoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ receives eternal life as a free gift. Amen, amen. This is such a wonderful and powerful lesson. I pray you meditate on this lesson and have a blessed and wonderful day.